Greetings, viewers. This is my 100th episode, and so to commemorate uh, the 100th episode, I thought I would go back to the beginning and talk a little bit about my uh, beginning of my fountain pen journey, which continues to this day. And it all starts on one very, very specific day. I don't know. I don't know the exact day, but I do know it was in October of 1987. And I walked into a long, long since gone uh, pen shop on Beaver Street in New York City, which was a short distance from my office at the time. And uh, I just made it for reasons which I still do not know to this day. I made an impulse purchase of a Parker 75 in brown enamel with what's called a Thuya finish, which... Um, uh, is the pen you see in front of you. It is not the specific pen I bought that day in October of 1987 because that pen um, has long since been lost, unfortunately. But due to the miracle of eBay a few years ago, I was able to reacquire what is amounts to the exact same pen. So although this is the same pen that I bought that day that started my fountain, pen journey it is not the pen that started that journey that pen is like i said long since <clears throat> gone and then i used this pen as a daily writing pen at work and keep in mind this was in the 80s you did a lot more writing on paper at work than people do now so this pen got a lot of use um uh, for about five years it was my daily driving pen um, I used various brown inks during that time. I like to use a brown ink with the brown pen, which I still do to this day. Um, and my most, my favorite brown ink, which came was not the original one I used because I don't think it was actually available then, um, was uh, was a Parker Penman Mocha ink, um, which is no longer available. And um, I used this pen for probably about five years or so into the early 90s when I was given a gift of a Montblanc 144. Um, I then used that one as a daily driver for a while and then I started just acquiring and buying uh, uh, lots and lots of pens and again continuing to this day. So that's sort of how my fountain pen journey um, uh, began. And so this is the pen that, uh, that did start it all. So let's talk about this particular pen. This is a Parker 75, as we said. The, this finish is a uh, very dark brown and black, um, um, uh, like kind of marbleized lacquer. Um, and uh, it's very nice. I liked it. I really uh, fell in love with it in the display in the store, and I still like it to this day. Um, <clears throat> It is not a big pen. Again, we're talking about an era when huge pens were not really the norm. So here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. You can see it is both uh, decently shorter and thinner than either of these pens. It's not a featherweight pen because this is all metal with lacquer on it. So it weighs 22 grams, which for a, doesn't sound like a lot, but for a pen this size is actually a pretty decent amount of heft. Around the cap band, it says Parker. It has the little Parker logo, and it says made in France. Um, it has the identical finials on the top of the cap and the bottom of the barrel. And of course, it has the extremely iconic Parker arrow clip, which works wonderfully. It is a pull to uncap pen. It does post, and again, not a long pen. Definitely a pen you want to post. I think this is very short, unposted. Um, again, doesn't really back weight or anything like that. Very, very comfortable, good length, posted. Um, one thing that might be controversial that people don't like about the Parker 75s, <clears throat> the section does have these facets in it which enforce a triangular grip, which a lot of people don't like. Uh, one thing that people do like, and this is not universal on all Parker 75 sections, but it is with this one, if you see these little marks here, you can actually rotate this nib to fine tune the nib angle to your own personal preference, which is quite a nice thing um, and decently uncommon, actually. The nib is um, a 14 karat gold nib. 
It says Parker, 585, 14 karat gold, France, and it has the hallmark for the gold. Um, the feed is an unremarkable plastic feed, but it does have an F for fine stamped on it. For these Parker 75s, they put the nib width on the bottom of the feed, not on the nib itself. These Parker 75s had nib units, which were just, you could just pull out and remove them and swap them, and they would sell uh, different nib units for these as well. So these are actually quite um, quite ubiquitous. The Parker 75 was a pretty popular model. It was made for quite some time in a multitude of finishes. Um, the pen is a cartridge converter filled pen. This one has a fairly modern Parker push-pull um, converter. So, uh, story goes, when I bought the Parker 75 that I used, uh, it came with a very cheap Parker squeeze converter, which I used for a few years. And, um, and I, um, uh, was really unhappy with, as you can imagine, the squeeze converters just are not good, and it was very tedious to use, and I put up with it for a few years, and then I happened to see an ad in a magazine for a very expensive Parker dual-fold pen, and the ad parenthetically mentioned that it could use cartridges, or you could fill it from a bottle, so I'm thinking, oh, that pen must come with a converter, too, and then I'm thinking, there's no way an ultra-high-end pen like this, which at the time was multiple hundreds of dollars, which was very expensive for a pen, there's no way any purchaser that's spending this much money on uh, a pen that expensive would possibly put up with this crappy squeeze converter. Parker must make a higher end converter and um, I just don't have one. Now, of course, you can just go Google it and look things up on Amazon or eBay back then. So in any case, I went back to um, a different uh, uh, store this time. It was a large office supply store on Lower Broadway in New York that had a very, very huge selection of office supplies, pens, inks, everything. Great kind of store. Again, gone as well. Um, and I asked them about uh, the con Parker Converter's replacement, and they then pulled out another squeeze converter. I said, oh, here's a replacement converter. And I said, no, no. I said, what's the converter that comes with the dual-fold pen, which they sold there? So they pulled a dual-fold pen out from under the counter. They opened it up, and it was a nice Parker piston converter. And I said, aha, could you check to see if that will fit my pen? Again, I didn't really know the notion of standardization in converters and stuff like that was something I wasn't familiar with back then. And he tried it in my pen, and sure enough, it worked great. And he said, um, uh, we don't have these as spare parts, but I can order you one. And that's exactly what I had him do. And um, I got the uh, Parker piston converter and I was much, much happier. And I was just sort of kicking myself for not doing that years before. But of course, what did I know at the time? So like I said, so this has neither the uh, piston converter nor the um, the squeeze converter. This has a push-pull converter, which is, doesn't hold a ton of ink, but is fine for my purposes nowadays. Um, <clears throat> in any case, that is um, um, pretty much the parts of this pen and the little story behind it. So, I guess the only thing left is to see how this pen writes. And we're going to see that right now. Okay, folks. So, what we're writing with here today is a Parker uh, 75. And this is from, say, 1980s to 1990s. Uh, like I said, the one I had, I bought in 1987. Um, and this has a fine 14 karat nib. Um, these nibs really don't have much in the way of flex or anything like that. Um, they are just pretty, pretty, pretty stiff. Um, but it does write quite nicely. Um, and if memory serves me correctly, writes about uh, the same as the one that I had back in the, uh, the old days. It's a, it's, a, it's a comfortable writer. It's smooth. Um, and it has good flow, and it was very reliable. The one I had, like I said, I used it daily. Never really dis disappointed me um, at all. Um, I did have to fill it quite often because, again, for most of its life, I was dealing with that crummy squeeze converter, which not only uh, did it not hold very much ink, you couldn't really tell.
tell at any given moment how much ink you had. So I think pretty much about every morning or every other morning, sitting at my desk, I would just I would just give it a fill. Um, and uh, like I said, one of the only downsides of this, not for me, but for some people, might be this faceted uh, section, which sort of does enforce this very specific um, uh, triangular grip. You know, much like a Lamy Safari or, 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 or pen, any any other kind of uh, kind of pen uh, kind of pen. Uh, like that. In terms of wetness, I'd say it's actually maybe slightly above average wetness for a pen this sort of fine and, and, and of this uh, this type. Um, but I, I was always very, very pleased with it. Never had a problem with um, flow or leakage or dry time or anything like that. Um, so I think that's probably, you probably heard way more about this old pen than you care to hear about. So let's talk about this ink for just a moment. Okay, so um, this is clearly not an ink that I used uh, back in the old days because this ink's only been around for a couple of years. This ink is Ackerman. Um, S B R E Brown. So if you're not familiar with SBRE Brown, it is, an, is the name of a person. So Stephen Brown um, is probably the most popular YouTuber in terms of reviewing um, fountain pens. Um, and he actually had his own ink produced um, and bottled by, um, by Ackerman. Now this ink in terms of comes and goes in terms of availability and in the type of bottle and size of bottle it came in. I bought mine a couple of years ago when the only way to get it was in this very large 120 milliliter flask, which is an extremely cool bottle from uh, from uh, uh, Ackerman. Um, and like I said, it, the, the, they just sort of do a run of it, it becomes available, it sells out, and then it becomes available again, uh, it's sometimes in different size bottles. I believe the last time I checked, the, they were making it in a smaller, maybe 60 milliliter flask uh, shaped bottle from Ackerman as well. But again, it, it does come and go in terms of the packaging, but the ink is the same and it is, might be my favorite brown ink. And like I said, I was always very partial to brown inks. The, the whole time I was using this pen as my daily pen, I used different uh, types of brown uh, uh, inks in it over the, um, over, the, uh, over the years. But this is a really, really nice, really just pretty shade of brown. I think it's very evocative of milk chocolate to me. Maybe that's why um, I like it uh, the way it looks. Um, but um, again, great, great shade of brown. And, I, and I've always been um, been very, very pleased. Uh, been very, very pleased with it. So that's um, what this ink looks like on this uh, Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, folks, as we said, this ink is Ackerman. S B R E Brown. And um, again, just a terrific, terrific, really, really pretty shade of brown. Again, might be my favorite brown ink that's currently out there. Um, I've done a bunch of episodes uh, looking at just sort of color themed episodes of inks. I've done a black ink episode. I've done a, um, a blue ink episode and I recently did an orange ink episode. I'm definitely, the next one up is definitely going to be a overview of brown inks because I do have quite a few of them and they obviously vary quite a bit and so it's worth uh, doing that survey. So I definitely will do that. Um, so I think that might do it for this episode, but I do want to give a special word of thanks to all my viewers and subscribers. This, like I said, has been my 100th episode. I've thoroughly enjoyed making each and every one of them. I really appreciate all your kind words and comments over the couple of years that I've been doing this. Um, please keep watching. If you're not a subscriber, please, please become one. If you have a comment, question, suggestion, etc., please, please leave it. Keep those thumbs up coming. And again, um, here's to the next 100 episodes. And until we meet again, have a great day. Bye-bye.